AFL as a project manager. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's that's pretty much my main kind of like role, as well as being a mother to a fifteen-year-old. Okay. Yes. Good boy or girl. Fifteen-year-old daughter. All right. Is she into all her yeah. social media? <laughs> yes. I think I needed her to sort me out earlier on today, but I managed to do it from by myself. So I'm you quite happy. You did really well. I did really well. <laughs> So, Camellia, is that how you say your name, Camellia? Yeah. Um, so, do you run a business or do you work or are you just an author? Yeah, well, um, an author, um, a student. Yes. Um, and up to an NLP course yesterday. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, I have a four year old. You'll see her often. Wait, you need to go that way. Oh. And I have a 15 year old. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah. So you've got two things in common, 15. Oh, okay. Sorry. What, what about you, Laura? Right. I'm a, a social worker. Yeah. I work with children. Yeah. And um, I've got two children. One is 24 and one is 19. Children, adult children. Yeah, young people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but always a child. I'm 47. I'm <coughs> yeah. my mum's child. That's yeah, right. I'm my mum's baby right. too. <laughs> I can tell, Karen. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, do we need a bit of that? So listen, um, I've geared this around if you're also an entrepreneur, but you never know, you might be secret entrepreneurs as well as working for TFL, NLP courses and social working because you might suddenly get an inspiration. So this is going to be suitable for you, not only for your book, but if you run a business, okay? So you're in the right place if you're running a business. I know you're not, but other people watching this video might be what running in their own business. And they might be frustrated at lack of sales. Um, in some cases, people have tried hiring PR agencies and they just don't deliver the goods to you. And, you know, you spend a lot of money and get very, very little return. Uh, again, for you three on the call, it doesn't, I don't think this will be relevant. But imagine that you are a social worker and you know, you're like the leading expert social worker and you keep seeing somebody else in the press all the time. You get a bit like, oh my God, I, can't, you know, they keep, I keep seeing them in the press and I want to be in the press. That is what it's all about. Or you've tried to pitch your book or you're going to put, pitch your book and you hadn't heard. But I know that you're actually currently authoring, aren't you? You haven't launched your books yet. Is that right? No, we haven't. Okay, so you're kind of on your book journey. Oh, I don't know what's happening here. Something's, it's gone all, there's a line. Anyway, never mind. It doesn't matter because I'm going to help you with your PR. And I'm, oh, I don't know what those lines are, but never mind. This is what you're going to get by hanging around. I'm going to show you a very specific seven step process on how to get your book or your business into the press. It kind of is relevant for both a business owner and a, an author. Uh, then I'm going to show you the three critical steps when you do want to start promoting your book to the press. And then I'm going to give you some press release templates, or not test release templates, but press release examples, okay? So here's me, and I don't know what these lines are. I'm going to do that. I don't know why, where, where they've come from. Anyway, so that's me in my 20s. I work for my mum's business. She used to have a mail order company selling beads, imported from all around the world. I went to Africa. Uh, India, Peru, you name the country, I, I had such luck and I went with her sourcing the beads, uh, which was a fantastic job. She got herself into the press on her own by writing a very a, a letter to the Daily Mail and it literally transformed her business overnight by having one press appearance. And then um, I used to work for an organisation, I, I do apologise about these, can you see these lines? Yeah. I don't know where they've come from. Um, but anyway, just pretend they're not there. <laughs> so that's me, younger, 10 years ago with my son Felix, who's now 11, and that's my little daughter Nina here, who's nine. And I started to import my own knitwear from all around the world. Um, so let me just see what this chat says. It might be something about the, um, hang on a sec, uh, chat. Hang on. Oh, Danny. Aha. Uh -huh. It says, Danny, she's here. She's trying to say hi, but can't work it out. You, oh, you did the lines. Excuse me, Danny. Can you delete those lines? <laughs> yeah. um, so I don't know whether we can hear you. So hang on a second. I'm just going to see. Yeah, Danny. Okay. We can't see your camera. And I can't even see here. Anyway, I'm going to carry on. Cool. So, we, you know, so, so hopefully Danny's here as well. 
So I was selling um, knitwear. I loved selling the knitwear. Uh, I don't do it anymore because I've kind of graduated on from it. Oh, Danny's doing lots of <laughs> She's graffitiing my presentation. But what I did when I was running that business, I managed to get myself loads and loads and loads of press coverage. Because I remembered the power of PR when my mum got her business into the press. And I managed to succeed getting my business, which I started off by doing lots of children's geared stuff. I then went for more upmarket, more classic. Changed the name as well to Hum. And this is all the success I had. I got into Vogue, Marie Claire, The Sunday Times. You know, a huge amount of press I managed to get for myself, by myself, with two very young children. If I can do it, anybody can do it, I tell you. And now I teach entrepreneurs how to get into the press or how to get their books into the press. So you can see some of the uh, PR successes that people have enjoyed, you know, recently, which is brilliant. I'm really proud of that. So we're using a proven process, which I have established over the years of working with um, entrepreneurs, working with PR agencies, and also, you know, working at my mum's agents, my mum's business, and she got so much press coverage, it was unbelievable. So the first step in the process is actually how to find your press hook and your golden nugget. Your press hook is what makes you, is what is relevant. Why are you going to be pitching your story to the press or your book to the press? What is your hook? What is it that is going to get you, get the journalists interested in you? And then you can think about your golden nugget. And the golden nugget really tends to be, what is it about you that makes you stand out from the crowd? Okay. So, you know, have you done anything which is amazing? There's something in your past what that me? you're doing, um, you know, which makes you stand out. And then on the second step in the process is the customer research. You need to do lots of research. It's customer research, journalist research, and also researching the competition, okay? What I mean by that is, so this is really relevant if you're running a business. Uh, so, oh, I'm going to have to use people's mics for a sec. Right. So I can see them. Right. I think we've, I've muted everybody. Hang on a sec. Mute. Okay. So everybody's muted. So if you're running your own business, it's really important to actually research what your customer is doing. Then you can find out what they're doing and where you stand out that's different. When you're researching your journalists, you can do some secret stalking. So you go onto Twitter, you go onto LinkedIn, you, you know, wherever your journalists are, you can see them hanging out. Ooh. Hello, can anyone hear me? Yes, Danny, we can hear you. Oh, hooray, I've been trying to speak for ages. Sorry about the lines. Um, thank you, <laughs> just to let you know I'm here. Yes, you've been graffitiing all over my beautiful presentation, but never mind, we'll forgive you. At least you're here. <laughs> oh, she's unmuted. Right, okay, anyway. So Danny's here, thank goodness. Okay, so research your customer. Research your journalist, because by researching your journalist, you'll actually okay. find out where they are. Okay. And where um you know and how to talk to them but i'll go into more detail about that in a minute and then also research your competition so this is all about your book so who has written a book you know how, i don't know what genre your books are in actually let's just unmute you a minute kaza unmute what book what's your book about kaza um it's about it's kind of a spiritual kind of book and it talks about my journey and, and my faith um in god okay basically. Yeah, and it's like, okay. a, like a healing kind of book for people that yeah. are going through depression and that kind of stuff. So. Great. Okay. Good. So that's that genre. So that's like the spiritual self-help, would you say? Yeah, possibly, yeah. 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 Okay. So then look, there will be other people who've written similar-ish kind of books. Yeah. So what you need to do is research that genre. Go to your bookstore, look on Amazon and see what they're doing. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry, I can't see your name. Uh, sorry, what's your name? The lady who's got the headphones on and the pink top. Laura. Laura, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, Laura. So what's your book about? Oh, I need to unmute you. Sorry. Sorry, speak again. I, I had to unmute you. My, my book's about, um, I'm a twin and uh, my twin sister doesn't live in the same country as I do. Uh -huh. So it's going to really explore the differences, even though, you know, twins who are identical twins in different continents. Oh, wow. And how, <laughs> and, and how things have changed, how 
we've grown separately, but still the bond still continues to be there and explore cultural, um, you know, needs and that sort of thing. Yeah. Interesting. Where's yeah. Where's your sister living? She She lives. She lives in Ghana, West Africa. Is that where you're from? That's where I'm from. Yes. Oh, yes. I've got some beads yes. in Ghana. Can you see my ring over there? Yeah. When you said beads. Here, look. I'm gonna get them for you. Beautiful <laughs> trade beads. God, the whole thing's gonna come tumbling down. Here we are. Look. Is it for the? Is it for the waist or is it for? Oh yes, I know. Do you recognise them? I do. They're beautiful. They are, they are beautiful. Yes. They are very valuable. So if your sister can get, uh, get some. They are. They are. Yes. Put it on so looks. <laughs> beautiful. It's gorgeous. Do you know, they used to set these are trade beads and they used to send them over on the ships to ballast them. You probably know that anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. Yes. So that's what I'm going to talk about, you know, really how interesting, different, really interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. I think even yeah. non-twins are really interested in twins. You know, it's a phenomenon which, uh, you know, people who haven't got a twin is like, oh, I'd love to hear more. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another lady on the call. Camelia, are you still there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Hi. So I was just asking what your um, uh, book is about. Oh, my book is about, um, it's a self-help development book and it's yeah. about healing and um, target audiences, ladies between 30, uh, 18 to 35, mm -hmm. those who suffer from confidence issues, low self-esteem, um, depression, loneliness. So my book's just to uh, help encourage other people to come out of that. Yeah, brilliant. So they're all, they all sound really interesting and useful books. And Danny, I know you haven't, you're not writing a book, but maybe you've got a book in process. So I'm going to unmute you. No, ahead of time, okay, shit, Dan, that you need to get something in. Or, ooh, I think I'll mute <laughs> 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 let's not unmute anyway so it's all about what you're doing girls is your book what is what's the genre that it falls in and then look and see what other people are doing see where it's appeared in the press see who's written about those kinds of books okay just a bit of mm -hmm. research then you need to put together your press toolkit. Now, part of your press toolkit is your press release, which I'm going to show you some examples of in a minute. But it's having good pictures. Uh, but this is more relevant if you're running your own business. So your press release, there's going to be, there's a quite a specific layout which you have when you write a book press release. So, and I'm going to give you, I've got about three or four ones from different publishers. So it's going to be quite interesting to share with you those in a minute. Then when you decide you're ready to go to the press, You've got a PR plan of action. So it's like, who are you going to be approaching? When are you going to be approaching them? Have a checklist, you know? So it says name, publication, um, email address, action. So that could be name would be Susie Greaves. Uh, title is editor of Psychologist magazine. Email is xyz at psychologist.com. Let's say action. She told me you know, to, come, to call her back in three months' time. She's not interested in self-help at the moment, but she's going to be interested in three months, okay? That's the kind of thing. That's your PR plan of action. Then it's your campaign and pitch. So then you kind of got your campaign sorted out and your pitch. So when you're calling up the journalist and saying, hey, I've got this most amazing book about twins, you have to read it. It's, it's fascinating, you know, and then they go, well, we're not really interested in twins. We're only interested in triplets. <laughs> You go, well, actually, do you know something, you know, like, you know, whatever. You have to be able to sometimes twist or switch your pitch a bit sometimes. But your campaign is how, what you're going to be doing, are you going to be emailing them, are you are going to be calling them, what are you going to be doing, and what are you going to be saying to introduce your book to the journalist that you're pitching to? And then success, you're in the press, what do you do next? So the key thing, the answer to that question is you thank them. You never know when you're going to need a journalist again. So this is your seven step process that works and works and works and gets, you know, these logos down here where I've had mentions, clients have had mentions, etc. So these are your three critical steps in order to get self-promoting. It is start with self-promotion, okay? I don't know what you guys think about self-promotion, but it's really essential and that's all to do with you becoming your own essential, you know, your PR gurus. Because if you aren't self-promoting, 
and you're not hiring a PR agent, then who is going to sell, who is going to do the promotion for you? Who is? Probably nobody. Obviously, your friends and family will, but you need to be that banshee, the crazy banshee going, it's all about me and it's all about my book and I want everybody to hear about it. Not doing it in a gross, pushy, salesy way, but you just have to think every day, have I talked about it? Have I alluded to it in a tweet? I'm going to go to the Twins Girl, so there might be a BBC series about twins, and they often do things about twins, like the child of our time and stuff like that. So you could be linking in your book to that. Do you know what I mean? So just be following what's going on in the press. My recommendation is that you do at least one self-promotional activity a day. Now, I do it, and I have done that ever since 2008. And if I haven't done a self-promotional activity a day, I feel bad. <laughs> You know, it's because I was taught that I had to do that every single day. And that's why I kind of, I make sure that every day I've done one thing, which is pushing myself out there. And it doesn't mean say you need to push, but I'm going to show you a graphic in a minute. Um, and then it's also because by doing self-promotion, you can, you can position yourself as the expert, in, industry expert, rather like Danny is as the, you know, the mentor, the book mentor. Here we are. Just going to give you a bit of evidence with her lovely branding here look at that okay so she's posi positioning herself by talking about books um you know and you know she's the mentor it's such a good name the book journey mentor and then you practice doing self-promoting and then you will reap the benefits so here's my graphic so make sure you do it once a day this is recorded by the way so if you, if you haven't got time to take notes don't worry you can watch it at your leisure afterwards <laughs> and hear any salient words that popped out by accident. Um, <laughs> make sure you do it in bite-sized chunks. Um, you've got a self-promo calendar. Now, because you've all joined the call, I'm going to give you my 31-day self-promo calendar. It's an Excel spreadsheet, and it's got an idea every single day of what you can do to promote yourself or to promote your book, okay? Uh, and then, you know, make sure that you push your your uh, tweets and you know push your promotions out on social media and it's the 80 20 rule so the 80 20 rule is 80 percent is helping so it's being very helpful to journalists and saying i loved your article it was fantastic and liking their tweet and saying something like um you know you wrote about uh depression the other day I know somebody who's an expert in that field, you might want to interview them at a later stage. That's like a help. And then afterwards you can push, which means you can say, hey, I've written a book on self, I've written a book on depression and this, you know, teenage depression. Here's a copy, you know, can I send you a free copy? And then you just rinse and return the whole process. Look at these, gra <laughs> my graffiti. <laughs> And then you're um, visible, hashtag visible. So step number two is you need to tune in and listen. It's so important that you do this, okay? So many people don't listen to the news. They don't read the newspapers. You really need to when you want to start your journey getting into the press. So you need to do that because you can be the first person to react to what's going on in the press, okay? Um, I haven't, what's the story today? I mean, I don't know. Oh, yeah, an interesting story today is that Prince... What's he called? Prince Philip is retiring at 96. So I know that there's going to be a lot of stories tomorrow about the oldest retiree. Yeah, not Prince Philip. So you could react to that story. You, what you lot are doing is not, is not relevant. But I've got, a, I've got a client who's actually 79. She set up her business at age 75. And she'll be saying, I'm not going to be retiring at 79. So she'd be a really good person to get to pitch to the press. So you've got to think about what is going on in the in the press that you can hop on with your book title okay is this making sense give me a nod yeah great thank you um and then also the good thing about tuning in is actually you can see what your competition is doing so um you know if there's a mental health expert who's out there all the time talking about social work and depression da, 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 you think okay i want to, i want a bit of that space and so you just see what they're doing you're secretly stalking them ready for when you want to come in and you're ready to get in there and then it's a very usual word you know journalists are always looking for the media friendly expert As media friendly means that you're chatty and you can talk on the radio or you can give a good interview i'm sure all of you can do that <laughs> So, um, yes, and then by tuning in, 
by reading the newspapers or the, you know, let's say you want to get into Red Magazine, buy it every single month and you'll get used to the format, the layout, the journalists, and it's going to make your job much easier when you are pitching to the press. So here's my graphic with a lovely bit of graffiti. You're going to react, okay, to what's going on. You need to find your press hook. Why are you getting into the press? What is relevant? Your golden nugget, what makes you stand out? Now, golden nugget is, I'm going to remember Tyson Fury, the, middle, the heavyweight boxer he won, I think, two or three years ago. His golden nugget was that he used to spar in the kitchen with his brother when he was like a five-year-old or a six-year-old in the kitchen with tea towels wrapped around his hands. Now, that was his golden nugget. And then he turned out to be, you know, a heavyweight champ, which is amazing. Um, there's another one, I, Adam Peaty, I think he's called. He was an Olympic um, gold swimmer athlete. And then he used to be scared of water. So what is it that was really interesting about you growing up? It doesn't have to be like an Olympic athlete type thing, but what was it about you that made, makes you stand out? My golden nugget is that when I was about seven, I used to go to a friend's shop and he used to ask me to design his posters all the time for his selling his um, you know, toys and furniture kids, you know, uh, how do you call it, climbing frames and swings. You know, now I'm kind of doing marketing, so it's the same thing. So what did you do as a kid, or what is it? Is that, have you hobnobbed with somebody really famous? What makes you stand out from the crowd, okay? And can you think of a catchy headline for your, um, you know, for your press release? So twins, it could be something like, we are, my identical twin is, we are continents apart, but we are, we have the same thoughts. Or so, I don't know, you know what I mean? I, you know, I, I can't think off the top of my head, but it's something like that. Teenage depression, it, you, know, you know, there will be headlines you can think, okay? Press release, it's really important, but I'm going to show you some examples in a minute. And then you share it, okay? Share it socially, put it onto Twitter, put your link to your press release on Twitter, and then you can send it out and ask all your friends and your um, you know, work colleagues or entrepreneur friends to share it. And then you just, again, you rinse and return the whole process. And then you become visible. Step number three is all to do with self-belief. Now, was it Kaza? You're writing the book, the spiritual book. Do you, have, do you talk about self-belief in your book, Kaza? Um, yeah, I do. Um, yeah. I've had to build myself up, basically. So it's about, yeah, building up that confidence in myself and um, seeing my worth. Yeah, definitely. It's really interesting because I spoke to a, a woman today who is so amazing, such a leader. You know, it's like, oh my God, it's coming out of her ears, yet she has, hasn't got the confidence to promote herself. It's, it's really ironic, isn't it, that people are like that. You know, all of us, we all have that little thing in our head going, oh, you're not good enough, you're not as good as that woman or that woman or whatever. So you've mm -hmm. just got to up the ante again. Because if you don't believe in yourself, then who is going to, to push you out there? Unless, of course, you're paying the big fat money <coughs> for PR agency. All right? Mm. So, Kaza, you've probably written a lot about self-confidence and self-belief, so I'm going to tell you why. This is what I believe. You can correct me if I'm wrong. You need to up the ante because if you don't do it, who else will? And it's your big Great. why that drives you so why are you all writing these books what is it why do you want to why do you want to share your message because it's powerful and that other people can benefit from it or that it's really interesting or is it you know you want to make sales because you want to you know put bread on the table to feed your family and um, and also you need to be confident because when you're pitching to the press you're speaking to journalists if you speak like this hi yeah my name's Amanda Ruiz and I've just written the book, they're going to go, I want deadline, sorry. <laughs> and they are like that, all right? They're not all like that, but they can be like that. So you've got to be out there, okay? So by sounding confident, even if you're like going shitting yourself, excuse the language, but if you're, <laughs> if you're feeling a bit shy, you've just got to kind of put on an act, but just put on your happy face for that minute that you're making that phone call. Just, you know, I used to do ad sales, and you have to do smile and dial, put on that face, and you know, go like that, okay? And then you sound more credible and you sound more passionate. People, they just want to hear your passion in, in what you're doing. Oh, here we are. So that's me wearing that same shirt. Okay. So you need to have the belief, have the vision. Where do you want to go? Who do you want to read your book? Where do you want to be published? You know, which um, articles do you want to have written about you in which magazines and newspapers or radio? So switch on that positive mindset. 
And then you need to practice. And obviously, the first, the first pitch you ever do might be abominable. And you might think, oh my God, that was so embarrassing. Just make sure you do your first pitch, first two or three pitches to people who don't really care whether, you know, whether you're there or not. Do you know what I mean? Whether, whether you lose that pitch or not. Um, because then on your fourth pitch, it'll be really good. Okay? But don't pitch to friends. Make sure you have to pitch the real world, okay, to journalists or something. And then you need to practice again. And then you'll have the success. And that's just what I did. You know, I, but I always used to make sure that I, you know, you, you, let's say the Telegraph, they've got the editor. I would go right, right down to like almost the work experience person. Try and squeeze the work experience. And then you just go a few steps up and then you go a few steps up. And then you're ready for it, ready for the big guns, all right? And then again, you rinse and return the process. And you become, whoop, whoop, visible. <laughs> so let's talk about that book of yours. How are we going to promote it? So here we are. Here's your book. Is it printed yet? Or are you still in action? Are you still writing it? Still writing it, Laura. Camelia, you're not there. And Kaza? Um, writing it. Still writing it. Yeah. So when's it going to be... When are all your books due to be published? Is it quite a few months away? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's a long process, isn't it? Or not? I mean, I don't know. I haven't written a book. I need to write one, but... Um... <laughs> So it's going to be a few months, but this is good for you to be thinking about when you're writing a book, right? So you need to have like a book elevator pitch. So at the beginning, I asked you, what's your book about? And you very succinctly told me what it's about. And it was great. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So Kazi said, mine's a spiritual book. And that, my ears pricked up. I thought that sounds interesting. Camelia, you told me your book's about uh, mental health and depression and all, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Is it yeah. geared at a certain age group or is it, did you say 30 plus or something? Yeah, 18, 18 years old to 35 women. Yeah. And is it Stop people who are, I know you're a student, is it a game that's student, you know, is there a certain market you're aiming it for? Yeah, um, for anyone really who's suffering from low self-esteem and issues like that. But it's my reason for my book is to create my own platform for me as a transformational coach. Oh, wow. And an inspiring one. So for me, it's more like, yeah, it's my, my platform more, more or less. Yeah, that's another reason for writing books. What was the reason, um, Laura, for you writing your book? Because of the separation between my sister and I, you know, I came into the UK at the age of 21 and um, I've lived here longer than I've lived in Ghana. And so it's going to be about my life story, really, you know, the, um, the differences between how our, our life's paths, you know, sort of journey. Do you miss her quite a lot? I. Say that again. Oh, yes, very much so. Very much so, yes. yes it's hard. I, my, sister, coming over she, soon. my sister lives four hours away, and I feel re I really miss her. It's horrible. So I can't yeah. imagine her living in Ghana. Yeah, it's been, it's been quite tough, yes. It is, really tough. it is. I can totally understand what, you're, you, know, yeah. what you feel, but on top, she's a, an identical twin. Absolutely, Has yes. she got married? Yes. Yes, she's married with three children, yes. Mm. In fact, she's travelling today to um, witness her daughter's graduation oh, really? in the States. Oh, in the yes. States, really? Yes. Oh, I bet you wish you were yeah. there. Well, anyway, we, you know, Never you mind. Be happy and healthy, got your lovely family, so <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay, Absolutely. so let's get back to your book elevator. I mean, so you've all got interesting things, so it's like, how are you going to get your book elevator pitch out there? And I think Danny can help you with your titles. So I have an elevator pitch for me, Amanda, you know, the PR woman. So I say, hello, my name's Amanda Rui. So I actually tend to do it in eight words, all right? So I, I help entrepreneurs how to secure press coverage, or I help entrepreneurs to get into the press. So you can say, hello, my name is Laura. And, I, you know, we need to refine it saying, you know, like I said earlier, something like continents apart, in, identical twins, how I've survived, you know, 24 years of separation or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's heart wrenching. You know what I mean? It really is. And it's like, oh, but, it needs to, but I'm sure there's a ray of sunshine at the end of your book or whatever, hopefully. You know, but maybe you're going to give advice at the end of the book about how to get over it and how to handle it in a yeah. good way, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, I've, I've got a good plan. 
Good. Excellent. Uh, and Karen, actually, um, I've had um, information, well, some advice from Karen. Mm -hmm. And what she suggested is perhaps sort of seeing it from two sides. So um, my sister will write part of it and then I'll write part of it and then put it together as to how we've, you know, sort Lovely. of um, dealt with things differently. Yeah. Really good. I love that idea. Yeah. I've actually just finished reading a book. Um, here it is. It's called Blood Sisters. It's an oh, amazing. Oh, really? Yeah. It's amazing. It's it really a novel? Amazing. I, think, huh? I think I've got that. I think I've got that book. No, it's just Blood that, Sisters. Actually. It's just literally oh. tomorrow it actually gets launched. But it's really oh, right, okay. So it talks about Alison in 2016, and then it will talk okay. about Kitty, her her sister, in two. Here you go, in 2016. Ah, so okay. Maybe. Alternative Laura. factors, and then it also goes to talk about you know um, Alice Ali. She used to be called Ali when she was a kid. Ali 2001. Okay, so he say he's he's talking about it in different years. Yeah, is yeah, that what yeah, he's yeah. doing. Yeah, I mean, this is a thriller. It's a crime, you know, like a kind of a crime story. But it's the it's the concept. Here you go, June two thousand and eleven, Alison. Can you see that? Yeah. So that's talking I about can. when she was a kid in her, men, you know, yeah. that she talks in that uh, way. So that's interesting. Anyway, so what is your elevator? Yeah. So you need to think about a great kind of one-liner, really, to describe a book. Just think you're at a dinner party or you're in a crowded room, you're on the tube. I've just written a book. What's it about? This book, it's all about two sisters. One of them has an arty car crash and becomes brain, uh, you know, has brain, da brain damage. And then her, her other sister gets, it, gets, you know, something horrendous happens to her. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's just like... That's the bottom line of what the book's about. So what's your book about? My books are spiritual learning, you know, because I, I went through hell and back and now I can help other people get over, you know, suffering if they haven't found God or I don't know how, I don't know how you're going to describe it, Kaza, uh, you know, what the kind of the outcome of the book is, but you know, you can either think, you know, make it sound sexy to the, to whoever's going to potentially be wanting to pick it up and why they should pick it up and read it. Okay. And then when you are going to be promoting your book, you need to have a promotional calendar. So, you know, let's say you're going to be published, uh, print, let's say your book's going to be printed in November. So work back a few months and just say, okay, in September, I'm going to start, you know, looking at what's going on. I'm going to start pitching to the press in October, for example. And every day I'm going to be doing one promotional activity. Okay. So just, so otherwise, if you don't have anything written down and a plan, you're just going to be random and just firing away mm. randomly going, oh, that's a good opportunity. Mm. Just don't do all that kind of stuff. Mm. Okay. So where are you going to pitch to? You know, you need to decide. Do you want to get into the, into the printed press? Like, is it magazines? Is it newspapers? Do you want to get onto the radio? Do you want to get onto TV? Where is it going to be seen and heard? Or is it everywhere? So you need to write that down into your promo calendar as well. Okay, and so if you really want to get into the Lorraine program, then that needs to be on your, um, you know, your promotional calendar. Um, oh, there's a there's a thing which is missing. It's going to come back in a minute. It's all about local. I'm going to come to it now. Hang on. Here we are. Local. If we can read it, it says fest. Okay, so I don't know where you guys are based. Are you all Londoners? Yes. Uh, yeah. I live. I live in Birmingham. I'm Birmingham, in. okay, and Casa. Yeah, I'm London as well. Okay, so you know, in your local boroughs, if you're London, think about where the, there are local bookshops. You can offer to do a reading, a signing, a review. Is there a cafe that you can go to? Um, you know, and also, are there any local festivals in your region that you that you can try and get into and say look i'm a local author because people always like to hear about the local talent they've got on their doorstep mm -hmm. so think about that um and then who would you love to review your book so that's why you need to look at your competition of your book who what are the similar books so what has she reviewed recently in which magazine so if it's a fiction book you know it would be lucy atkins who is a um, she's like a, a thriller psychological thriller kind of um 
um, author. So she'll be reviewing similar books like that. But who is a person who, you know, who is a critic, who's a book critic who, who kind of covers your kinds of stories? Like I know that the Evening Standard do book reviews. Does the Metro do them? So start picking up papers and gathering you know, places where you think, mm, just gather them. You don't need to do anything, just put them in a folder and that's going to be your book research folder. And then you need to write your press release. Uh, and once you've actually got everything ready, put your blurb onto your website and have a link, have a, just a page talking all about it and then you can share it with other people. And then also there's a lot of, um, you know, authors who are on Twitter, but a lot of authors also on Instagram. I don't know if any of you do Instagram. You start. <laughs> yeah, you need to start because you've got things like writers of Instagram and there's also, you know, just, just reset, put the word writers into Instagram and see there's so many potential posts there. And then when you are pitching your book, make sure you're targeted. So don't pitch Lucy Atkins, the thriller, or the thriller book critic, if your book's all about self-help or it's about business or something. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So here are some um, press releases now, okay? So this one, just to show you kind of like a layout. So it's the little book of Higgy, or Haig, I don't know how you pronounce it. So on the right-hand side, they've got the you know, little picture of their book cover. It's who is by, um, and then what, you know he's gonna be in the UK, so he's gonna be here like on a book tour, I presume. It's a non-fiction, you know, number two bestseller bestseller obviously your books haven't been sold yet so we can't bestsellers but you know you can say that they've had fantastic feedback or whatever the world's happiest man in this book is gen is generously gorgeously designed so you need to try and get some people to read your book and to give you those what are those things called the quotations you know they're like the testimonial pieces that you can then put into your um you know you can say this book about spirituality totally changed my life in five days during you know on the sixth day that when i finished the book i was a different person do you know what i mean something like that <laughs> mm. so hopefully it's gonna be that transformational but you know you kind of think about wowie things um anyway and then there's like the blurb here and then there's a picture of the author here and then a little bit of a bio about the author then his um and then who is the, like the promotional person there okay Here's another um, publishing house, Summer's Grace by Vanessa Hannum. Um, is that Quercus? I think that might be. Uh, no, Quartet Books. Okay, that's the publisher. That's the dist distributor and that's the sales. I mean, you won't have to have all these details. Um, but again, and then you can see it's different here. You've got Summer's Grace, it's the title, the who it's by. Then you can see when it's going to be launched 24th of November, 2016, the price is 12 pounds. That's the ISDN number. That's the size PB. I don't know what that stands for. Any offers? Anyway. A passionate book. Well, there you go. Thank you. Ooh, maybe it's a passionate book. Thank you. So, <laughs> I love it. Uh, and then here is like your pitch, like a passionate historical romance inspired by real events. Okay, so what is your kind of, your elevator pitch? That's your elevator pitch right there. And then there's a small bit of blurb, and then there's a lot of blurb. And then you've got all the people like Country Life who's reviewed it, da 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 da. And then key selling points. So that, this is quite a nice press release to be fair. So that's that one. And again, you can scour these at your leisure when you get the recording. Um, so here, this is another one. 30 Days by Annelise Verbecke, translated from Flemish by Liz Walters. So, it's, and again, it's got a picture, 30 Days. Um, Alphonse is a Senegalese immigrant, family observant and imaginative. Alphonse is formerly a musician based in Brussels who's left the city with his girlfriend, Kat. Da, 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 da. About the author. Annelise Verbecke is an award-winning novelist, short story writer, essayist and script writer. So what about you guys? What are you that makes you sound interesting? You know, you're a social worker, you're a, you know, this, you know, you're a project manager, but why have you done it? It just makes it more interesting and inspiring for the people to read it. Um, okay, so that's that press release. And then here's the final one. It's a two-pager, a riveting first novel. So maybe you need to get somebody to say that when they've read your book. 
obviously these are all newspapers saying that but you know it won't be possible really if you're unestablished authors so you can just get you know colleagues or people who are in your industry or whatever to write about it and to give you a nice little clip it so it could say a riveting for a riveting first self-help a riveting book on self-help by and it's by the professor of psychology from Birmingham University do you know what I mean Camellia does that make sense there yeah okay. yeah um playing the footsie by Penelope Jacobs it looks quite that looks a bit like um oh, what's that woman called those books do you know who I mean <laughs> anyway Jilly oh. Jilly Cooper Julie Robert. Huh? Julie Robert? no Jilly Cooper that posh lady from oh. Gloucester <laughs> oh okay it's one of those. Yeah, she always writes about horses and everything. Oh, yes, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I can't remember her name. Yeah. I can see her, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know who I mean. She's got gappy yeah. teeth like me. That's right. No, I wouldn't say she had teeth like you. <laughs> I can say it, don't you worry. Yeah, I wouldn't say it. I don't mind. You have to be out there. Um, anyway, blah, blah, blah. It's got all that stuff and about Penelope about it so books are you going to have your self published or are you going to try and go to publishers um self publishing mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. so okay well anyway there's gonna be a blurb about you but i think just keep it to the one page i think it makes it easier don't you think mm -hmm. so which one have you liked best if you like playing the footsie put give me your vote 30 days press release by the passionate book or like that one all yeah, that one seems to be better. And the, and the first one, I like, I like that one as well. Penguin yeah. and this one here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's going on? Sorry, there's, no, there's a car that's oh dear. outside. Sorry, it's not me. It's not one. We've got the burglars coming around. Okay. So please remember. Sorry. Oh my God, I can turn your thingy off. So with everything I've been talking about, if you can hear me with the beepings, it's not just theory. It's, it's what I do to help people get their press coverage. And it's the same principle that you could use when you are pitching your books to the press. I hope I've given you some ideas, you know, when you want to share your story with the world. Okay, and it's what I do time and time again, and I share it with other people. So it's all about you guys being visible. And you know, you being the authority in your spaces, because that's what you are. And Laura, you're going to be the authority in twins by the time you've written your book. And it's generating more sales. And also for you, if you get published, you get into the press, you're going to get a huge amount of confidence. It is amazing feeling getting in there. And it's you not having to take on a PR agency. It's you doing it for yourself. So I'm not sure why you turned up today. It might be because you're fed up with being invisible, but actually your, your writers are in evidence at the moment. Or it may be because you want to start doing your own book PR. That'll be why you turned up. And maybe some, some of you are doing your own social media, but it's like not working and you want to become a bit more visible. And I'm just going to quickly tell you about a success story I had with Rose. And I know that um, Danny has seen this and some of the other ladies have seen this, but she's amazing. She was launching this beautiful African condiment range and I helped her with a, with a press release. And we got, you know, the kind of like the elevator pitch. We did this one here. It's Move Over Levi Roots. Beautiful young female entrepreneur has a secret sauce. So try and be, don't try and be over clever, but try to have a bit of a, a funny pun. Sometimes it works. It doesn't always work when you're, when you're creating your press release for your book, for your title. Have you all got your titles, by the way? Yes. Yes, yes. I presume that's what you worked on. So, you know, so you use your heading, for, you know, take stuff out of your title. But she was really happy because we did a press release. We sent it out. And she got such a huge amount of inquiries from, you know, um, Waitrose and BBC Food Magazine, all sorts of oh. stuff. And then I've got another woman who came to my, my PR workshop, Claire, and she works, she's an author or an editor for a, a company called Cool Stays. And they have all these really trendy um, places where you can stay. Fantastic. And I gave her the advice and she got the confidence to start pitching to the press. Sometimes you just need the confidence or you sometimes just need the permission to go and do it you know and say okay yeah your book is good enough danny will help you out there she'll tell you it's good enough because i'm sure she's steering you totally in the right direction so i've got an invitation to say thank you very much for um coming on to this webinar and that is it's going to design to give you the solution and i think you're going to be needing this in a few months time when you're ready 
is to get you from A to B in the simplest and fastest way. And you can apply right now, or you can do it, take note, and then when you're ready, you can apply for my 10 minute power PR press hook session. So we're gonna help you find your press hook, all right? And what we're gonna do is discuss what's gonna, what is interesting about your book, and why will the journalists pay attention, and make sure it hits the spot, and make sure it's totally relevant to you. So you may want to book it you know, in the next few days, but I think given that your books are still in motion, just take note of the link, and it's gonna help you go from here, from A to B, and not do the wing and prayer, you know, like the spray and pray marketing idea. So if you go here to amandaruiz.co.uk, you can apply for your um, 10 minute find your press hook session. But what we'll go over to now, we've got five minutes and we can do some Q&A. So here we are. Anybody got any questions? Yeah, I, I, want to, um, I wanted to find out how do I get people to read my book, for instance, like um, The Times, The Telegraph, um, I don't know, OK Magazine, how do I get them to read my book instead of just friends and family? Yeah, so it's having that killer headline, asking, for example, this book here, I know this Blood Sisters, I've got a forward copy. So, um, you know, can you send a forward copy to anybody to review it before, or like the draft? So it doesn't have to be, um, you know, it, it could just be like, you know, printed A4 sheets if you've got somebody, but it's a really compelling book and it's going to be really helpful. See if you can send over them. Is it called the manuscript? Try and get the manuscript sent over. And then you can get those, you know, the lovely comments and put, you know, as, you know, the time says it's a compelling must read for self-help or something. But it is also a question of you researching the journalists, the, the key people you want. To read, to read you and re review your book, you've got to do that research before you pitch to them. Don't just say, oh, I've just written a book and here it is, read it. You need to get to know them over a period of time. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got any questions? Oh, Kaza. Yes. Hi, it's not really a question, it's more of a um, kind of like comment in regards to the use of Twitter and Instagram. Um, and I'm not really like a social media kind of person, I'm more kind of like a Facebook person and that, that's it. But a lot of people have actually been telling me um, that I need to definitely get involved in these social media sites to kind of like help to promote um, the book. So I think it's quite valuable that you actually said that today as well, because it's it's making me realise that I have to do that if if I need to if I do want to kind of like self promote. That is the best way yeah, to do it. I think so. I mean, to I, get those links as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, which I, I probably wouldn't have even known where to have started. Um, but yeah, this is a, a good place. Yeah, I mean, the whole reason why I've got a forward copy of Blood Sisters is because I started following. Uh, a radio station called Radio Gorgeous on Twitter. I got established a, you know, like a relationship with the woman who runs Radio Gorgeous and it's through Twitter that we've become really good friends. I've been invited on walking holidays with her. I'm now going to be co-interviewing the author of that book. Wow. So um, Twitter, I tell you, people say it's old fashioned. If Donald Trump's using it, he's got millions of viewers or whatever. I think it's really the place to go and lots of journalists are hanging out on Twitter. Instagram, I'm using Instagram. I don't think it's, an, for me personally, I haven't used it massively on leads generation, but um, it's a great place to go, but only if you've got something to talk about. But I tell you one thing, you could release a chapter a day or, you know, some, a snip, you know, you could release, because you've got so many words you've written, you could totally mm. do something inspirational and interesting there. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, um, so I'll, I'll have to follow it through. And, and also the plan that you've, like, um, that you're going to send through for us to kind of like the pro promotional calendar yeah. yeah as well i think that'd be quite good as well because i think it is about thinking about it and and having something in place some sort of like strategy and not kind of like going in there and yeah doing not the being all over the place really. yeah be good yeah. excellent well i hope that's been helpful and then laura do you have any questions i'm really sorry i'm dashing off <laughs> hello hello <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, are you getting ready? Are you going out? <laughs> oh, no. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, I think uh, for me, it's um, cause just like um, Kaza. I don't know you as Kaza, but anyway. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Camellia, um, I've started writing this book and the journey so far has been quite amazing. And so learning things as I go along has been quite helpful. So just what um, Kaza said earlier on about getting in there, Twitter and Instagram, you know, it's one of those things that I think will be quite good. I am on Facebook and I think I've got quite a few followers, is that what they call, you know, people who are quite interested. And I think because my twin sister is on there as well. So oh. it's where I'm um, waiting because she's coming to visit soon. She's coming to the UK on the 26th of May. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try and use that platform when she comes. So, you know, to start putting things out there. And Definitely. That's perfect time. Lots of photographs. Try and get onto the radio already in Birmingham yeah. Radio. Mm -hmm. Birmingham mm. Radio, okay, yes, yes, mm. so, yeah. Do you know what I mean? She's there, and you've got how many chapters? Try and write a few more chapters before she gets there, and, um, you know, just have that as a goal. It's a okay. golden opportunity. Yes, okay, thank you. And tell her to bring me some more trade beads, please. And me as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all like a bit of trade. They're, they're very expensive, but anyway, maybe she get, us, get us a special job lot. So, yes. okay, so I hope that's been helpful. Something to, you know, food for thought, something to think about as you, before you pop out and meet your sisters and do all sorts of other things. So thank you very much everybody for watching. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you very thank much. You. You're welcome. Well, and, um, and again, you will have the recording, okay? So that's that. Okay. Brilliant. I'll, I'll share okay. the link when it's ready, all right? All right. Thank you. Have a nice all evening. Right. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, bye. bye bye. Nice meeting you all. Bye bye. 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 Thank you. Bye bye. bye.